Okay, hello everyone. Today we're going to be doing an introduction to graph theory. The reason why graph theory is important is because we are going to be using a lot of it in all the math that you're going to learn, especially in computer science. And especially nowadays because we have social media. So how about that? And in order to give you an idea of what graphs actually mean, I'm going to talk about it in relation to the social media types of accounts that you probably use. Okay, so the first learning objective that we're going to have is going to be talking about the definition of a graph, uh, a digraph, and a subgraph. And so in order to motivate the definitions of graph and digraph, I'm going to show you what that means with respect to Facebook and Twitter. So Facebook. Facebook means, here's me, that's my avatar. And I want to make friends with someone that I met, so I'm going to send them a friend request. Alright, and so what happens is when you make a friend request, you kind of wait there for a little bit, and then you see at some point they will have accepted your friend request. Which means that this is kind of a bi-directional thing in that whoever you're friends with is also friends with you. Alright, so when whoever has accepted your friend request, you can think about it as having an edge in between the two of you, all right? So that's Facebook. On the other hand, on Twitter, it's a little bit different in that you don't make a friend request, you just start following someone. Oh, poor kitten cat. Um, and so what I can do on Twitter is I can just start following someone. That person does not even have to know I exist. Taylor Swift has, I don't know, something like 65.3 million followers. She probably doesn't know most of them. And Kitten Cat can follow me back if he wants to, but it really doesn't matter. This, this could go in both directions or it could not. And as you can see here, when I was drawing the edges or arcs for Twitter, having an arrow there was important, whereas for Facebook it was not important because the friendship is in both directions every single time. Right? And so that kind of motivates um, what a graph is and what a digraph or directed graph is. So now that we've talked about that, we can kind of go into the math portion and actually talk about definitions. So Facebook is an example of an undirected graph, which we're just going to use the word graph to reference. And a graph is defined by its vertices and its edges. So as you can see, I wrote that at the very top of the board, G equals VE. The vertices are just going to be a set of nodes. Um, you can call them vertices, you can call them nodes, I don't really care. And it's just a set. So for example, I might say in this case, Let's have the set U, V, X, W. All right, so I just have a set of nodes. I can name them however I want. In this case, I wanted to name them U, V, X, W. All right, and edges are going to just consist of pairs from within the vertices. So in this case, I might define the edges as being U, V, U, W, W, X, and X, U, all right? And in this case, I'm just talking about a graph. Remember, graph means like Facebook, in which the order doesn't matter. So even though I wrote U, V, in this case, it does not matter to me which one those, which, whether I wrote U, V, or V, W, uh, because it's going to be in both directions. And since I have a board here, I can also draw this out in an awesome picture that really shows uh, visually what it means to be a graph. Alright, so in this case, usually the way we represent vertices or nodes is going to be with circles. U, V, X, and W. Alright, and so in this case I have the edge U, V, I have the edge U, W, I have W, X, and I have X, U. Oh, that's not XU, that's XV. Eh. There we go. All right, and so this visually 
actually represents the graph. So mathematically, it's just defined as the set of vertices, V, and then the set of ordered, some set of ordered pairs within those vertices, and that's E, the edges, and then visually you can draw it like this. All right, and that is a graph in which the order does not matter. Now, I might instead want to have a digraph or a directed graph. And the digraph is exactly the same, only in this case the pairs are ordered. So just to make that clear, I'm going to say, okay, instead I'm going to uh, name my graph D, V is going to remain the same, but I'm going to change this to A. And this is A, and now the order does matter. And the way that I represent that visually is the same way I did with Twitter. So in this case, I have an edge or an arc from U to V, U to W, W to X, and X to U. Right? So visually, the way I represented that was by drawing arrows to show the direction. And then just to kind of make things nice and tidy and clear, I have A. So A in this case, the reason I use that, it represents arc. Uh, you can still say edge, uh, but it just seems kind of nice to say arc because that shows what those directions are. All right. And the last thing that I want to define is subgraph. As I might say, well, my subgraph is W and, I don't know, B, where W is some set contained in the original set of vertices, and then B is contained in the original set of edges, but it's such that those edges are only the edges that you could get from the vertices being within W. All right, so in that case, maybe I want my subgraph to just be UV and my edges or arcs to just be the directed arc from U to V. In conclusion, that covers learning objective A which have the definitions of graph, digraph, and subgraph. A graph G consists of a finite vertex set V and a finite edge set E. The edges in E are unordered pairs of vertices, usually written UV. A digraph is a graph such that the edges are directional, in other words, arcs. And finally, H is a subgraph of G if the vertices of H are a subset of the vertices of G, and similarly, the edge set of H is a subset of the edge set of G.